Dear friends, nearly eight years ago, and at my direction, the Diocese of Greensburg entered a comprehensive strategic planning process in order to help me fulfill one of my primary responsibilities as Bishop of the Diocese. That is to ensure the Catholic Church in this diocese will continue to be faith-filled, vibrant, and strong, so we can pass the faith along to our future generations while also evangelizing others by bringing to them also the gospel message of salvation through Jesus Christ. That strategic planning process was prompted by many factors including the fact that diocesan priests, as well as our Catholic population in the diocese, are aging and declining in numbers. A centerpiece of our planning process was the series of regional Lenten listening sessions in 2006, to which every priest and layperson in the Diocese of Greensburg was invited. More than 9,000 people participated in a total of 85 meetings in what were then 18 regions in our diocese. Those sessions helped to fulfill the promise I made to the people of this diocese shortly after I was appointed Bishop of Greensburg by the late Pope, Blessed John Paul II, in 2004, and before I even arrived here. That promise was to listen to what the people in the pews of the diocese had to say about the church they dearly love. Those listening sessions focused on specific topics, including parish structures and staffing, evangelization and faith formation, and Catholic schools. After the Diocesan Strategic Planning Committee and our regional pastoral councils reviewed the enormous amount of information from the listening sessions and discerned what it meant for the future of the diocese, this same strategic planning committee forwarded a comprehensive report to me on September 25th, 2006. I began implementing the report's recommendations shortly after receiving it, and in October 2008, we experienced our first phase of parish restructuring. I recognized then that these initial actions would not be the last that we would need to pursue if we were to remain faithful to the recommendations which came out of the strategic planning process. In July 2012, after seeing some developments begin to mature in parishes and schools in various locations in the diocese and the challenges they presented, I commissioned a committee composed of our diocesan managing directors, our deans, and others to identify, study, and analyze, and review these developing challenges. The work of this group, many of whom were involved directly in our 2008 parish restructuring, was to ascertain whether the recommendations of the strategic plan regarding the parishes and schools they were studying were still appropriate with the situations that have developed in the last five years, namely from 2008 to 2013. The committee has found that the strategic plan and its recommendations of 2008 still are valid as our foundational planning document for addressing the challenges we face now in some of our parishes and schools in 2013. Pastoral, sacramental, and spiritual needs, as well as physical and demographic realities, were all considered in this new stage of strategic planning, as was exemplified in our original strategic plan. Over the course of the past year's planning efforts, therefore, we continue to remember our shift from an historic, historical model to a pastoral needs model. We recalled our commitment to recognize the need to objectively distinguish the nice from the, the necessary, and echoed in our memory of past experiences that small and scattered is not a formula for long-term survival. These were three key concepts valid in 2008 and still are valid now in 2013. The massive number of Lenten listening sessions of 2006 and the quality of the information gleaned from them 
have proven to be so accurate and enduring that it became evident that repeating another round of listening sessions would not have added substantially to the vast store of knowledge already in our possession. Here again is a confirmation that our strategic plan of 2006 remains, as it was intended to be, a foundational planning document for the next generation. This means, therefore, that what we are doing in 2013 is not the beginning nor the end of a planning process that has served us so well in the past, does so now, and will continue to provide us with guidance in facing challenges well into the future. In 2000, the Diocese of Greensburg had 101 active priests in ministry. Currently, our total stands at 67. Projections indicate that in five years from now, that number will be reduced to 48. And in 12 years, 2025, that total will plummet to 27. These projections take into account deaths, sickness, ordinations, and departures. This challenge alone makes it clear that we need to continue to follow recommendations, the recommendations of our st strategic plan sooner rather than later. It is better now to respond with prayerfully discerned planned actions of parish restructuring rather than to be forced into reaching rack and reacting rashly with unnecessary crisis management in a band-aid approach. Now we face additional changes which involve also a number of difficult decisions. After much prayer and discernment and continuing the restructuring we began in 2008 and continuing to follow the recommendations of our strategic plan while considering new developments of the past five years, I announce the following decisions. They will be effective Tuesday, June 25th, 2013. The following parishes will be closed. St. Hedwig Parish, Smock. St. Boniface Parish, Latrobe, or Chestnut Ridge. The following parishes will be merged. Madonna of Chenstakova, Cardale, St. Thomas Footdale, Our Lady of Perpetual Help, Leckrone, All Saints, Masontown, St. Procopius, New Salem, and Holy Rosary, Republic will be merged to become one new parish with the name St. Francis of Assisi Parish, which will have worship, worship sites in Footdale and Masontown. I chose this name to honor also our new Holy Father, Pope Francis. The following parishes will be partnered. St. John the Baptist Scottdale will be partnered with St. Joseph Everson. Our Lady of Grace Greensburg will be partnered with St. Benedict Marguerite. And St. Paul Greensburg and St. Bruno parishes will be partnered. It is important to note in this context that the number of parishioners directly impacted in this phase of parish closures represents approximately 2.5% of our Catholic population in the diocese. However, those parishes being closed are currently being served by approximately 10% of our assigned priests in the diocese. 10% of our assigned priests in the diocese are serving then 2.5% of the Catholic population in this area. We must continue to deploy our clergy personnel in the most efficient and healthy manner possible and also commensurate with the demands of wise stewardship. A parish which has accrued insurmountable debt and faces closure because of that debt risks bringing down also a successor parish which would inherit the burden of that debt and we would be destabilized by it. The result would be that one failed parish may bring down another stable one. Obviously such financial dysfunction cannot be allowed to go unaddressed. With regard to future actions, first, in early June I will be announcing clergy appointments and they will be announced 
first in the parishes directly impacted by them, and then in the entire diocese. Secondly, I will promulgate, promulgate at the request of the Diocesan Presbyteral Council interim weekend mass schedules for our newly established and partnered parish communities mentioned above. And these interim schedules will be made after proper consultation, discernment, and prayer in keeping in mind that is in 2008, they will be subject to review and possible modification, possibly after six months of trial. I must appoint our priests where they are needed most, and therefore I must also consider the reality of key factors such as an aging population and an increasing number of deaths of parishioners. In the past 50 years, for example, the number of Catholics in Western Fayette County parishes has decreased by 70%. In the past 10 years alone, the number of Catholics in that region has declined by 25% primarily due to death. Currently, in that same area, we are burying four people for every one infant that we are baptizing. That is an alarming ratio. We are fortunate to have some growth in a few areas of our diocese, even when many areas continue to face decline. I must be able to appoint priests as we move into the future where they can most effectively serve the faithful. Coinciding with our parish restructuring, we are currently preparing for information sessions for those who are stakeholders in three of our diocesan elementary schools. All Saints Regional School, Masontown, St. John the Baptist Regional Catholic School, Scottsdale, and the Cardinal Maida Academy, Vandergriff are all facing difficulties and will soon be engaged in a review process to determine future appropriate action. School principals and boards of trust administrators will present viable solutions to me for my consideration. The process which these three particular Catholic schools are pursuing is rooted also in our comprehensive strategic plan and its process. Like our parish restructuring process, this review process is not simply a knee-jerk reaction to crisis. As I have quoted to you in the past, the late John Henry Cardinal Newman once stated, and I quote him, to live is to change, and to have lived long is to have changed often. The lesson to be learned from this bit of wisdom, I think, is that people who refuse to manage change become its victim. They die. I know that many people are frequently strongly attached to their parishes and their church building in many wonderful and powerful ways. They are baptized, married, and buried there, and they have life-changing experiences there that mark them for life. So when a parish is closed, it is understandable that parishioners feel that a part of their lives have been lost, has been lost. To help assuage their pain and the grieving they must work through, counselors from Catholic Charities will be available to help them, if they wish, in this process, as they were available also in 2008. I ask for the faithful of our diocese to keep in prayer all of our brothers and sisters who will be impacted by the pending parish restructuring. And I will, be celebra I will be celebrating masses of welcome and remembrance in successor parishes, just as I did in 2008, to try to help those who mourn their loss, celebrate their past, and find in their new parish a home where they can be comforted and find hope for the future. Let me conclude by repeating what I said on March 4th 2004 at my ordination and installation as the fourth Bishop of Greensburg. Let us now join our hands and our hearts in building up the Lord's Church in our beloved Diocese of Greensburg. Thank you.